Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. After his resurrection, Jesus imparted profound truths to his disciples. In doing greater works, Apostle Oromo Sayi reveals these transformative teachings. Learn the secrets Jesus shared for living a life of extraordinary impact. Discover how to walk in greater works through faith and action. Step into your calling and do greater works in His name, empowering you to live out the teachings of the risen Christ. It, it, just in case you survived that temptation, it is because you know why you are fasting, that's why you survived it. When you begin to journey on the path of obedience, your dialect will change. Your, what, what moves you changes. And it's men that are rooted in obedience for decades. I'm not talking about three years of obedience. If you have not paid your tithe for 10 years, you don't know the power of tithing. If you have not fasted for, for 10 years, you don't know the power of fasting. No, you don't know it. You are just a church goer. The powers of the kingdom that you have been brought into, you, don't, you have not touched it. You are just playing around. If you have not prayed in tongues for seven hours, for, for ten years, you don't know the power of prayer. You don't know the power of prayer. You don't know what prayer can do. I need to ask you, what can your prayer do? You are not answering me now. What can your prayer do? Because when real prayer starts, the first thing that is considered from heaven is not what you are praying, is who is praying. <laughs> who is this one praying? And then your file comes and they see the track of track record of obedience. It's obedient. Prayer is a tool for obedient people. It's a tool. You want to know the power of prayer? If you have not done it for 10 years, you don't know it. So we have believers all over the world that are Christians but they have not experienced God. No, because they have not obeyed enough for him to be willing to show them the truth. Hmm. The Bible says, and Jesus spake unto the Jews that believed on him. They were believers. Not unbelievers, they had believed. He said, if you continue in my word, then you become chartered disciples. Become my disciples indeed. You become the disciples that me, I call disciples. The world can call some others disciples. But the one me, I call disciples, are the ones that continue in my word to understand the way I think, to understand what I expect. In order for you to be a disciple, it means you are willing to learn of the ways of God. That means you, you are not just looking for blessings. This God, I want to know him. I want to know how to. Because if you don't have, if you are, you say your God is a spirit. How do you think spirits are unknown? Through your mind. Since you are not answering, I will, I will keep quiet. It's only your heart that is adapted to know the ways of the, of the Spirit. See, knowing the ways of the Spirit is experiential, not intellectual. Now, that's why the passcode into knowing the ways of God is rooted in your willingness to obey Him. He will just say, do this. When you become foolish enough to begin to do it, then you begin to understand why He said. That's when you know the truth. And for a man that knows the truth, Satan has lost 
that man in terms of his enterprise of deception. He can't work on him anymore because spiritual knowledge has been revealed to him. That's why I say, if you don't know prayer, you can be praying now and Satan will come and make you feel depressed, make you feel that you are a failure, make you feel that you are, you are not married, your life is not shining, then you'll be discouraged and you stop praying. The reason why you were discouraged is because you don't know the power of prayer. The truth about prayer has not been revealed to you. You did not continue. You did not continue. So the average believer, and trust me, I've been a missionary for a while. Not just in cities, but in villages and in towns. I can give you a good assessment of how Christianity is in this time. The average Christian does not know the truth. Because knowing the truth is not cerebral. Knowing the truth is a product of consistent obedience. Then the Lord now decides to give you something that people that just come for window shopping in the house of God will never have. Because he wants to make you different from window shoppers. You become his advertisement for deep things that are in him. Oh my. That is why he begins to give you commandments. He gives you commandments because the things he's revealing to you are dangerous. When a man is given a sword, then he needs to be under a general because being in possession of a sword is a dangerous enterprise. If it's not, if it's not restrained, if it's not regimented, the use of that material that is given to him will become an offense. In some quarters, the reason why somebody is a plague to the body of Christ is because he's anointed. Oh, you are not with me? Okay. You, you did not hear that one. Okay, so let, let's leave it. The moment the things of the kingdom are given to you, you, you are a deadly man. The day you decide to turn your back on God, Satan will have a mighty harvest because of your life. So, he begins to give you commandments to regulate those powers that you are touching because you know the truth. Can't you see how terrible Lucifer is? There the are truths he discovered when he turned his back on God. He said, Many still this day. So when God begins to expose you to those things in the kingdom, then he begins to give you commandments to hold you down. To hold you down so that the kingdom will always profit from the investment that he has given you and that's why verse 2 says he gave them commandments whom he has chosen if he has not come to you to give you commandments you are not chosen yet your, your obedience is in doubt you are not qualified to know the truth where you are the truth is not available you <laughs> I know you won't say amen again. The truth is not there. He knows you are not serious. The one that created this, the whole earth, and then your own life, you, you become a mystery to him. He knows. He knows. He knows why you are in ministry. He knows what you want. He knows. So he will exclude you from some quarters and manage you at the outer court. Because if you go beyond that, ah, the way your heart is, he knows. He knows. He knows. He gave commandments unto the apostles he had chosen. That's number one. So the first thing he did to them is that he, he gave them commandments because the undercurrent is obedience. Are you there? Commandments. Let me give you an inst instance if you are still with me. Are you still with me? Where is the man on the keyboard? 
wait, 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 wait. Look for strings, strings. All right? Don't play, just look for it. Look for it. I will tell you when to use it. Now, I want, when I do theory, I will do practicals. The reason for the practicals is simple. Okay, I will not say the reason. I will not say the reason till the time. The things of God, He will not give you until He's sure that it is Him you are looking for. It's His will. You are it's His glory you are looking for. Because He knows the nature of man. He doesn't need anybody to lecture Him about how men are. Doesn't it? Doesn't need that lecture. First thing he did to them was that he gave them commandments. Second thing he did to them is in verse 3. To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion. Second thing he did to them was that he revealed the living Christ to them. Not the Christ on the cross. Not the Christ before the cross. The Christ that has manifested after death has unleashed his worst. He showed himself alive to them. When you begin to, when he knows that the reason why you are coming to him is because of him, because of his purposes, like Jesus, looking for what was on his father's heart, so that he can implement the same upon the face of the earth, then he will show himself alive to you. Now, this showing himself alive to you is not in not in bible study not that he gives you a revelation in the bible no no to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs these are encounters of the spirit because we are talking about greater works you you cannot perform greater works much more than the encounters that you have received Stay with me, stay with me. By the time I finish teaching, are you there? I, you know, I said we'll do practicals. The reason why I'm sure that the Holy Ghost will move, whether you, you maybe you don't want him to move, he will still move. <laughs> and you don't need to say amen to make him move, no. Don't worry, just be mute, he will move. Don't encourage him. He wants to move. He will move tonight. And that's not, I'm not saying it so that you say, Amen. No, your Amen is not needed in this matter. <laughs> the thing is this if Jesus shows himself alive to you, that encounter will give you something from him and make it yours. You know, Peter made a statement when they came to the gate called Beautiful. He says, silver and gold, I do not have. And I don't want to explain what that statement means. But such as I have. What, 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 do, what does he mean that he has something? When he doesn't have rand in his pocket. But he had something with God. And he could squander, he could pay for that guy's healing from the resources he had. When Jesus encounters a man, I'm talking about the living Christ, he makes you custody. He makes you custodian. He makes you a holder of 
the things in him. When you become a holder of some things in him, you know Peter did not ask Jesus, should I pray for the man? He didn't ask Jesus because he was in possession of something. And because he was in possession of something, he could use that thing. He knew the value of that thing. He knew what that thing could do. And that thing had enough authority to take care of the man's predicament. That's how a stakeholder, a kingdom stakeholder emerges. Jesus did not say, go and pray for the sick. Jesus said, heal the sick. He didn't say go and sympathize with them with a word of prayer. <laughs> he didn't say go there, cry and call his name. He said heal the sick. It means there is something Jesus will give you that you can use to heal. Just like the doctor goes for training and comes out with the skills to put you through a process that will result in healing. He has the skills. Jesus equips you with equipment with which form. Do you understand what I'm talking about here? All of those possibilities are tied to encounters that Jesus, the living Christ, will bring to you. And he will only bring encounters to the people that are foolish enough to allow him command them. It comes into your bank account. When you said you were giving and there was a problem with the children's school fees, then I now, I shook my head. That's a proof that he is commanding you. <laughs> if you have no record, no record of commandments, it means you are not operating under his government. The cry that we find in the book of Matthew, which is the object of the book of Matthew, has not been fulfilled in your life. It has not been fulfilled. You are a rolling stone. You go in the direction of your flesh. In you, Adam is still very much alive. <laughs> you know, his pastor, pastor witness that would have brought me. You see, he's the one that caused all the problem. He brought me. <laughs> they brought. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. Only few of us in the body of Christ, only few, have what it takes to challenge the powers that are at work among the Sangomas. Only few. So that believer that does not know the truth and he doesn't know the truth because he, he doesn't continue anything, doesn't continue prayer, he doesn't continue fasting, doesn't continue giving, doesn't continue tithing, so he doesn't know the truth. So deception can walk around his life. And when he stands face to face with the devil, the authority of Jesus will not manifest through his spirit because his life is a contradiction of alignment. To whom also he showed himself alive. Have you seen him? I was born in Stamara. I could not speak. I was a little bit intelligent, but I couldn't talk. It was the living Jesus that came to me and touched my tongue. How can I forget that? 
it was not Bible study he came to do. You are, you are not with me. <laughs> he, he didn't come to open scriptures and to say, I am the way, the truth. No. I encountered the living Jesus. The effect of that encounter was that my tongue got loosed. That's why I can preach to you today. When Jesus said to me that he was calling me to preach the gospel, the first thing I said, because I had an encounter of glory, I was taken to heaven for eight hours. The details of that encounter is withheld. But an angel read a scroll, and that scroll was my destiny. That scroll was what I was supposed to accomplish in life. When it got to the point that I was going to preach and I touched the angel, he said, no. God is aware of the fact that I cannot talk. So he cannot assign me to be a preacher. That aspect is not. That angel stopped reading. Unfortunately for me, the angel stopped reading. And then the angel screamed. The sound of that scream is what we call thunder. It was the energy of that thunder that brought me back to my body. So I began to beg Jesus, beg him, to beg him, to repent, to repent for years. So when he, he calculated and saw that my repentance was genuine, he now came and touched. He was angry that I couldn't see that he had the power to lose in my tongue. It is in that encounter I received the healing ministry. So if we have time, 20 minutes to pray for the sick, they'll be healed. No, not amen. Stop, stop that amen. I'm telling you that he gave me something that can heal. That's what I'm telling you. And I'm not saying it boastfully. Oh my God, you are not following. Don't hear the wrong things. So. I'm not saying it boastfully. If I tell you I don't have it, I've lied to you. When I met the healing Jesus, the living Jesus, he healed my tongue and he gave me the ability to heal. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He gave me the ability. Thank you, Lord. Have you met the living Jesus before? Where's my brother? He has left. So let me see the sound that you picked. Now, good sound. Uh -huh. Look for a progression and begin to play. No, 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 you got it wrong. Now, let me tell you something. When Jesus was ready to teach me about the prophetic office, for 12 years, I operated in the office of a teacher for 12 years. He wanted to introduce me to the prophetic office. So he opened my spirit to hear sound from heaven. Now, you see, most of you, not today. I don't know how to explain it. There are some sounds we make that we drive in. The moment that man, Jesus was teaching me how to move from the teaching office. That is, is my own personal teaching. If you go and try it, it will not work for you. Because you will need Jesus to give you your own teaching. So don't say, that pastor that came taught us how to. You will not migrate. You will be on this. In fact, there will be drought. So Jesus taught me how to migrate from the office of a teacher into the office of the prophet. 
He said, I should get a minstrel to produce one of these sounds. You don't want to help again. You are afraid now. So try again. Leave it there. Touch your strings very well. Okay, so it's too loud. Reduce it. Play a progression and don't change it. Don't change it. I know the living Jesus. He was the one that taught me how to migrate, how to move from the seat of a teacher, an instructor, into the visions of God. If you know what I'm talking about, you can, you can lock everybody in this auditorium out and you are alone with Jesus. Meanwhile, there, there are one million people standing by your side. You can't see them. This is what I got in the place of prayer before coming now. He said the average believer in Africa is not desperate enough for him. He said that by now the revival he planned for South Africa would have been five years on five years on by now but it was shifted because the church in the land is not desperate enough for him When you are not desperate for God, it means you have another God. It means you have another place where your confidence is. Because prayer is the dialect of the helpless. Open the eyes of my heart. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you I want to see you Open the eyes of my heart Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing, holy, someone begin to speak to him right now if there are areas you need to repent you can call upon him now pour out your power and love as we sing holy
by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.